welcome back to my shop rob from wesley summercraft here today i'm doing another inspired piece of wood turning inspired by cindy drozda it is a piece of maple burl that i got from a guy around the corner who's a an arborist so i've got that on the lathe it's going to be a live edge piece it's a shallow dish it's approximately six inches at the widest point and about two inches deep and I've got a nice sharp bowl gouge cutting air mostly. I find cutting faster is a lot easier to cut than if you try and cut slow. And I'm making a tenon so that I can turn it around. And then I make my final few cuts to make the shape that I'm looking for. This really doesn't take very long. And there it is, uh, turned and sanded to 400, and now turned around in the truck. I start hollowing it out. So as you can see, my flute is closed as I approach the wood, and then I open it just a little bit. Open being flute up and close the in flute to the direction of my cut and again it doesn't take very long to hollow this out with a nice sharp bowl gouge and a speed of around 13 to 1600 rpm making my final few cuts I wanted this fairly thin it's about about a quarter of an inch thick trying to make an even thickness all the way to the base using my fingers as a gauge and then also the thickness calipers there's always one more cut so I'm just measuring my chuck doors for a tenon for the stem so this is a spindle piece for the stem, it's another piece of maple. Just making my tenon there to go into the chuck. As you can see, it doesn't bottom out into the jaws. And I just tighten that up into the jaws of the chuck. And then chew up the top end. And I'm gonna drill a seven mil hole which will eventually accommodate the tenon that I will make on the underside of the bowl from the tenon that's there now. Now this is the size of the top piece of the spindle. And now I'm just removing some excess material with a roughing gouge. Makes pretty quick work of it. Direction of cut does matter. Actually, the direction of cut, it cuts better from right to left on this particular piece of wood. But when, now I've got the spindle gouge and I'm gonna cut downhill with each cut, opening the flute as I approach the bottom of each cut. But as I approach the cut, initially, the flute is closed in the direction of travel. That prevents skidding across the surface of the wood and getting catches. But, alas, I had an issue. Shit. That's what I said. My first spindle funnel. So I drilled a little bit too deep before, so I've done the whole process again, drilling a little bit shallower because where I'm at there now, I want the uh, spindle to be about 1.5 millimeters. So again, approaching each cut cautiously. Again, removing some excess material with the roughing gouge. 
lots of excess material to get rid of. Now I know that I want an onion shape and I want it to be thin for the most part. But I don't have a set shape as yet. I'm gonna let the wood speak to me as I work it. Going back to the spindle gouge for the finer detail. Now this would be a good opportunity for the skew work, but honestly, I don't use the skew a whole lot. Maybe that's something I need more practice with. But I can achieve the same results with the spindle gouge. You'll hear a little bit of vibration because I'm quite a long way from the truck. And you can hear the vacuum in the background. That's the vibration there. Support the wood a little bit with those cuts when the wood is so thin so that it doesn't break, hopefully. Trying to work it down to about 1.5 millimeters without breaking it. Maple is a good choice of wood for, for this kind of project, I think, because it's pretty stable pretty solid wood. That top piece just got sanded and now I've come back to start working my onion shape. Trying to figure out where I want the onion to start and end. roughing out some wood and that's the bottom of the stem I just passed it off a little bit just to give me a point of reference to where I end and now I've got lots of excess wood still to remove start working that onion shape Again, inspiration thanks to Cindy Drozder and also Ruby Claire from Windsor where I, where I live. She's a personal friend of mine and she's an expert wood turner. She's fantastic. Some of her work is exceptional. Well, all of it really. I believe she's been wood turning for about 40 years. Unlike myself, just seven years I've been wood turning. And five years on YouTube. My anniversary is coming up in 10 days, I believe. On the 30th of this month. Will be five years from my first video. Getting the onion shape, refining it just a little bit. And then I've still got a fair chunk of wood at the bottom that I need to figure out what I'm going to do with it. So 
So I'm just sanding that so I don't have to touch it again. And then removing that excess at the base. Trying to figure out what I want to do with it. Decide to go for kind of a trophy shape, I guess you could call it. Like a small trophy at the base. The base is two inches in diameter, which is one third of the largest diameter of the dish at the top. Trying to work on the principle of thirds. Now you get a good profile image of what I've made, giving it a quick sand. I sand it up to 400 grit. And then I start to pass it off. And I'll leave the last little bit to cut with, with my Japanese saw. Trying not to touch the actual foot of the stem. because that would mark it. And then I put my Jacob's chuck in with the two inch sanding pad, just to sand off the nub at the bottom of the stem. And now I've got a piece of cloth on a jam chuck. This is where I make the tenon to go into the hole in the stem so they fit together nicely. So I have to turn that tenon down to seven millimeters to fit into the hole in the top of the stem. Now that tapping noise you can hear is actually the material on the jam chuck flapping on the tool rest. I we'll turn that down to 7 mil and sand it. There's no finish applied as yet. And there it is ready to slot into the stem. So it's perfectly centered. And then I I want to paint the uh, stem black so contrasts really well with the maple. And now I'm going to just test fit the top before I glue it. Looks good. And I've got some uh, LePage glue which is very much like tight bond. I also use tight bond at times as well. Nice dab of that on the top and then align them up. And push that in home and give it a little bit of a twist so that it's in there nicely. And the glue is well adhered. And now that that's dry, I take it outside to put some clear spray lacquer on the whole piece. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you again for the next wood turning project. Take care now.